Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought we were going to do a tier list. And the reason is because I've done now the entire Napoleonic Wars series on extra history. Obviously I think I'm going to do the Italian campaign as well, but that's not Napoleonic Wars, right? It's not considered. I th uh, the consideration of Napoleonic War is 1803 to 1815. I think it is. Because then Napoleon is in charge of France, right? So, okay. So, we're going to start here, right? So, we have Battle of Ulm. Oh, wait, actually. We have these tiers here. We have Master Tier, right? We have the Iron Marshal or Marshal Davu, which is a beast or were a beast. We have a good general, right? We have a Meh general. And then we have General Mac, right? <laughs> yeah, and actually. Funny thing though, because we have the first one here, Battle of Ulm. I mean, Napoleon, we have to give context here, right? Battle of Ulm. Napoleon almost surrounds Ulm, which General Mack is there. And Napoleon almost surrounds his entire army. He takes his entire army prisoner. And, I mean, before Au Austerlitz... That's the most amazing... I don't even know why people talk about Austerlitz. I mean, Ulm is just... He took an entire army captured. With the speed and surprise that Napoleon had. I mean, because we're going to see this from a perspective of... The winner. If the battle was won in a decisive way and the end result was sort of of a high position of the of the person or army that won the battle so for mac in battle of ulm it gets general mac but for napoleon i think i think it gets master battle of ulm yeah i think so because this just took away an entire army for napoleon to then go more southeast to Aust Austerlitz, right? Okay, next up. This is Battle of Trafalgar. Right? Admiral Nelson died here. But he made it so. That he defeated the French and Spanish Navy. So Britain rules the waves for a hundred years before... Sort of World War One and the Germans building up their navy and the French one as well, right? So for the Brits, this was a major defeat on Napoleon. So this is the perspective of the British. And I think Battle of Trafalgar is a master, right? I don't know which one is above the other because... I would think that Battle of Ulm and Battle of Austerlitz made it so Napoleon could conquer much of Europe, right? But Battle of Trafalgar made it so Napoleon was stuck on Europe and that the British could starve Napoleon out or could survive when Napoleon puts the blockade on Britain, right? Or the continental system, right? So I think that's fair. Here we have Austerlitz. Hmm. Now, I think Austerlitz, it is a major defeat. Napoleon defeats both Russians and Austrians. He gets this sort of massive route in the south where he fires his cannon on the ice so soldiers drown, which is horrifying, right? But he gets this, he, he outwits the allied armies. The allied armies are slow. They're not coordinating. So Napoleon has his genius and his allies are not, they're not 
strategically like on the same level, right? So I think Austerlitz is a master. We have, what is this? This is Battle of Jena slash Auerstedt. So this is when Napoleon fights the Prussians, right? So this is after Austerlitz. This is when Napoleon is fighting the Prussians. Napoleon, so context again, Napoleon is chasing the Prussians and wants to fight them and get a decisive victory against the Prussians because he knows that soldiers are competent and can be trusted upon, but he knows that the generals are sort of old and old school as well, right? So he wants to get a decisive victory. He finds an army which he thinks is the main army, but it's actually just, I don't know if it's the vanguard or rear guard, but then... The Iron Marshal, Davu, meets the main army and he defeats it, even without Bernadotte's help, which is just, it's just amazing, right? I mean, this is from the French perspective and the French, I think this is, for Napoleon, I, he didn't attack Jena as much because he was hesitant, which makes sense. Right, but I think this is going to be a Jena and Au Auerstedt together, right? So this is a master rank as well. And I'm not ranking them above each other here because it's a little difficult. But, I mean, I think this is great, yeah. Maybe Auerstedt's uh, there, but, you know. Alright, here we have Eilau. Now this is difficult because... As we saw in the extra history video, that was just a slaughter for both sides. I mean, you saw Augereau just, just walk in. Obviously, he couldn't see because of the hail or the blizzard. He walked into one of the biggest cannon duels. Up to that point. This is a slaughter. Napoleon sort of gets a Puric victory. Right? I mean, the Russians retreat. But Napoleon has suffered heavy casualties. I think it was even more than the Russians. Right? So he didn't get really anything. So I think this battle is actually... If you think about it, he got the Russians to get out of... East Prussia, sort of, right? Mm. I think it's good general. Because he did some things... Which was a little bit meh. And also, I think Mar uh, Davu was on the right flank. Which actually made the push... On the Russians' left flank. So, Marshal Davu, again there, saving the day. But yeah, I think it's a good general. I mean, it's a slaughter, but it also gets Napoleon sort of what he wants. Although all the veterans from all these four battles up here, maybe not Trafalgar, but Ulm, Austerlitz, and Jena, all these veterans dies at Eilau. Not all, but almost all, right? Yeah, so I think good general. Yeah, because it's not an Iron Marshal. Yeah, it's not May. I, it might be on May. May I say, I say, good general. All right, we have Friedland. Here, Napoleon gets his decisive victory against the Russians. The Russians are context again. The Russians. Friedland is near the river. I don't know which river it is. But Freeland is on the west side of the river, and the Russians uh, goes over the river and have the river to their back. Then obviously Napoleon shows up. He ob obviously suffers heavy casualties at first, then he pushes them, the Russians back. There is sort of a slaughter, slugging match, but then Napoleon 
gets his decisive victory. So I think this is Iron Marshall. Right? I think this is Iron Marshall. I don't think it's up here with Ohm, Austerlitz, Trafalgar, and Jena Austad. I don't think so. I think it's here. He gets what he wants. He could have even chased more, but I don't think he had the cavalry. Or he did chase. I don't remember. Right? Yeah, I think Iron Marshall is good. I think it was much better than Eilau. Because, because it was a less slugging match than Eilau. And less slaughter. But it was still slaughter and slugging match compared to these. For Napoleon, of course. Right? Yeah, I think it's so. Iron Marshall. Yeah. Alright, now we have Battle of Aspern. Here is Napoleon's defeat. First, I don't know if it's the first ever defeat. I mean, Trafalgar, but he wasn't in charge of that. But here is his first defeat. At least, major defeat. Which could have ended his entire campaign, but was a, a it was a fierce battle against the Austrians, right? Because Napoleon is trying to get to Vienna, or he has Vienna, but he's trying to get a decisive victory against the Austrians, right? So this is the from the perspective of the Austrians because they won the battle, right? Because in all these, because it doesn't make sense to just put on oh, Napoleon, Napoleon's perspective because. Some of these battles, Napoleon's not in them. Obviously, the French marshals are in them, but yeah. So, for the Austrians, they fought hard. They learned a lot. Right? They obviously re reorganized the Austrian army in a core system like Napoleon. Right? And Napoleon sort of was a bit, a bit, didn't take in consideration the bridges that he needed to cross the river. And there were small islands and it was a, he probably, he went in like into the belly of the beast when he went to Aspern, right? So for the Austrians performance here, obviously it was sort of a slaughter. But they got Napoleon surprised. They were quick moving. I say this is either top on good general or bottom of Iron Marshal. Because this got sort of what the Austrian wanted. And it was Napoleon's first major defeat. Right? I think it's Iron Marshal. But I think it's beneath this one. But it doesn't matter, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Now we have Wagram. Battle of Wagram. Now this, Napoleon tries, not in the same place as Aspern, but tries to get to the Austrian army. More southeast. Right, and Wagram is like the hill that the Austrians stood on, right? So this was a sort of a bloody battle. And Marshal Bernadotte, I don't know if he was a marshal then, but he did a, not a smart move, right? He retreated from a village, and then the Austrians took it during the night. And then Napoleon said to Bernadotte to take it back, but he couldn't, right? Oh no, yeah, the reason why he retreated was because of friendly fire from the French on Bernadotte's troops. Because Bernadotte troops were Saxon. And the Saxon troops had white or, uh, uniforms like the Austrians. Not the same, but a white one. And I mean, when you're a cannon, when, when you're shooting cannon, I mean, yeah, white is white. You can't see the different small details, right? So Napoleon sort of won this one. He won, but it was revenge for Aspern, right? He won it. He could have been defeated there on his left flank, but he saved that. Right? There was almost a slaughter in the center. He saved that as well. 
Yeah, I think Vagram is by Aspern. Aspern is for the Austrians and Vagram is for the French. Although Austrians' victory here is a little meh. Yeah, and Napoleon couldn't chase the Austrians at Vagram because of exhaustion, I think. Right, yeah, I think this is good, yeah. Okay. We have Battle of Salamanca. So I think this is the first sort of major defeat that the French have against Wellington. So this is the Peninsular Campaign, right? Or Peninsula War in Spain and Portugal. So this is from the perspective of the British and Spanish and Portuguese troops. This is a major victory, right? For the French, it's pretty bad. Right? So I think this is, from the British perspective, I think this is an Iron Marshal. Because if you... Because I think Davu could have done the similar things, right? On all these battles. Maybe not at the scale. Right? Maybe not at the scale, but the same thing. And obviously it's not just because of that... That Davu can do it, so these go here. It's not that, but you know. Right? Yeah, I think that's go that goes there. From the British perspective, of course. Yeah. Yeah, that should be there. Yeah, okay. Alright, here we have Battle of Smolensk, I believe it is. So this is when Napoleon has invaded Russia. Which... You know, it's not the best idea that Napoleon had. He hadn't won at Spain, so I don't know why you would attack in Russia, but okay. The Russians had begun trading again with the British, so I guess traders, but you know. All right, but Smolensk though. Yeah, I believe this is a slaughter because again, it's against Russia. So when the French are in a battle with the Russians, it's always... Almost always a slaughter for both sides or the other. So this was a sort of a major victory for Napoleon, but because he got a pretty big city. But, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, him getting Smolensk, I mean, it was a staging point, I think, of he could have either gone to Moscow or St. Petersburg when he took Smolensk. And Smolensk, for the Russians, is a holy city, right? So, yeah. So, I, I think this is good general on Napoleon's side. Right? Because, I mean... I mean, almost all battles in Russia for Napoleon was sort of either here on good general or down here, right? Yeah, I don't... Yeah. Okay. Here we have another slaughter, but more of a slaughter in Russia. Battle of Borodino. Yeah, so I think Borodino is sort of a, I think it's like a, if you combine Friedland and Eilau together, you get Borodino. On the slaughter side, obviously Napoleon sort of wins against the Russians, right, but it's a hard one victory. Right, and I think when I saw or I reacted to the video on Borodino, I think there was a quote from a Russian, no, French general or something or commander who said, if you're not dead at 30, I don't know if, if it was you're not a man or you have lived enough or something like that. And he died at like 33 or 32 at Borodino. So, you know, I think for... Actually, you know what? I think Ayla goes down to Meh and I think Bordino goes to Good General. Because obviously Napoleon sort of throws his troops at the Russians. But obviously he's 
much far away from France, so he's a little bit desperate because he wants to get to Moscow before winter, which he sort of does, and then just sits there, right? But yeah, that's Eilau Meh. Yeah, yeah, because he was a slaughter. I mean, yeah. And Borodino, good general, yeah. And Smolensk, yeah. Yeah. All right, here we are on the last three. Okay, so we have Battle of Vitoria. So again, this is a major victory for the British and is one of the last battles in Spain that the French have, sort of, right? So the aftermath of Vitoria, I believe that the British captures Madrid, the capital, right? So they push the French all the way back almost to France and they have sort of a line by the mountains. So the French are on the east side and the Brits and the Portuguese and Spaniards are in like half or two thirds of Spain and Portugal, right? And I believe Victoria is the battle where the, the civilian va wagons are supposed to go to Spain or go to France or go to a city in Spain for retreating but they're pretty slow and they haven't moved that many even when the French are retreating so it's just a mass plunder mass route right on the French part it's a route obviously there was a general that tried to put on a rear guard action but you know he was almost totally surrounded and then obviously all all the uh, discipline sort of went away when the wagons were looted by the british so soldiers right yeah so I, for the british i think it's an iron marshal i think i think is it i think these two vitoria and salamanca Obviously, after Salamanca, the British still had to retreat because I think Napoleon came back or something, right? But Vittoria, I mean, that almost sealed the fate of the French never being in Spain again. Obviously, after some small battles, but yeah. Right. And here we go. Battle of Leipzig. The second to last. Battle of Leipzig. Battle of the Nations. Napoleon is, it's like Battle of Ulm, but in reverse, with a major coalition army, right? I mean, you have Swedish troops, you had French troops, Saxon troops, Russians, Austrians, British. I mean, you probably had Bavarians as well. Prussian, right? For the Allies or coalition, this was, obviously it, in the beginning, it looked like Napoleon maybe could defeat uh, the armies in the south and then attack in the north. But, yeah, obviously, the in the end, the bridge was blown a little bit early. But some coalition soldiers were on the, uh, the city or town, Leipzig, side of the river. So they could have crossed the river and attacked the fleeing troops before the coalition either i don't know if it's a master obviously the brits had a little force of rockets right that they used which weren't that accurate but i mean it's pretty devastating when you shoot it against either a square formation even though it's not accurate or just a line i mean that's just devastating Right? Like we see in World War II with the Katushka rockets against the Germans. But, you know. So I think, oof, this is difficult. Because I think... Because after the end of Battle of Nations made it so Napoleon wasn't in what is Germany today, but Germany, right? And he fled all the way to France to be in safety, right? So, 
Yeah, I, I think this is a master. I think so. Because they the coalition showed that they all could work together and almost encircle Napoleon. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, it's a master, I think. Maybe not above these ones, but it is still a master. And here we have Waterloo. The final one, right? So this is Napoleon's last attempt of keeping his crown as emperor, right? When he came back from from Elba, right? I would say if Napoleon won Waterloo, there would have been other battles, particularly in the south or uh, southeast with Austria, which he probably would have lost, right? So for the Allies, I think Waterloo, because there were some points of Waterloo where Napoleon looked like he could have won actually, right? He split the British and the Prussians, or the British had like Portuguese, uh, Belgian troops, right? But he split the Prussians and British, and he kept the Prussians at bay, and then attacked the British, right? As is a very, or was a very normal Napoleon thing to do. That's, yeah, divide and conquer, right? So I think Waterloo... Because so, the British and Prussians won, and again it showed, because the Prussians were sort of defeated, so they retreated north, but didn't go away from the British, they went north-west towards the British, right? Because in previous battles, when a coalition army was fighting each other, and one was defeated, the, the one would just retreat, right? They wouldn't stick together. So I think this, Waterloo... Is a master. I think so. Yeah. I think. Uh, yeah. I mean. Ayla there. That's. Yeah. I mean. If I would have done. This. Tier list. In. Of. The people. Or the armies. That lost. It would probably be in a reverse. Of what. I, what you see here. Right. But you know. Yeah, alright, I hope you guys have enjoyed this, comment down below if you agree with my tier list here, and I'll see you in the next video, bye!